Welcome back to the GCSE Minute Series. It's been a while. I started this series last year and then exam season came along and I was getting out so many videos that I tried to postpone it. Today, I'm talking about how to get grade eight in eight minutes. If you're new here, please subscribe. Make sure you're ready for the grade nine in nine minutes and then the series is completed. I'll link the playlist in the description. You can go through and see how to get a U, one, one, two, three, all the way up to eight in eight minutes currently. So grade eight is an interesting interesting grade. It's actually, I think, one of the hardest to specifically aim for an eight, but I'm going to give it a go anyway and give you guys the advice I think will land you us about an eight. An eight is also an interesting, sub, an interesting grade because like some people are very naturally talented at subjects. And in my opinion, an eight is roughly where that natural talent kind of gets you. For a nine, you need to lift up a little bit more. So some of you guys may be at eights in certain subject with fairly minimal work, but we'll see. Anyway, let's get straight into this. So the first thing then that's super important if you want to get an eight is you need to avoid mistakes, okay? So we don't want to see any like major mistakes. It's important that you avoid them because that's going to really hold you back, right? So for example, with English language, if you make like a big mistake in the 40 marker or something, you're going to be really hit and it's unlikely you get an eight. To get an eight, you need to be pretty strong. Like you've got really strong foundations, okay? And Often an eight is just doing things well, doing things efficient. It's not like completely excellent like the nine. It's just doing them, getting the marks. So I would make sure you understand like your exams, right? That's the minimum. Obviously, this builds on the seven, eight, um, the six, seven, all of that stuff. But I've said it again. I keep saying that by accident. And that's my last my last three videos. Um, can someone explain that to me, by the way? But anyway, so um, yeah. You just need to build up from the foundations, make sure you understand what's going on in your papers, make sure you understand what you're tested on, make sure you understand the structure of each question. That's the minimum, but for an eight, you just don't really want to be making significant mistakes. It does depend subject on subject. For example, science, you can drop more marks than you can in English language, but you want to roughly know the content. And that brings me on to the next section, which is content. For an eight, you need to be organized, you need to be able to cover the content that there is. So to, to do this, you need to understand what content there is to study, right? So you're not just revising blindly. You've got specifications, which is a list of all the topics you need to learn, or you've got clear checklists. Your revision needs to be quite organized. So I need to be able to tell you, right, what's in biology paper one, and you can say, okay, there's these topics in biology paper one. And that allows you to then learn the topics that are actually on the papers. The lower level students will kind of revise blindly for like 10 minutes, but it's, it's all about structure organization. So understand what content you need to cover. And then you need to actually kind of put in the time, put in the hours to get through content with an eight. With a nine, it's sometimes much more about like that elite exam technique, but an eight kind of seven, that type of region, often like a really solid understanding of content will get you very, very far, especially if you're not making mistakes. So my advice in terms of learning content then, Seneca, I always recommend Seneca. Um, to those of you guys that were here last year and you saw my videos, or if you're new, you'll see me recommend Seneca loads. That's because I think it's excellent. I used it so much and it helped me get nice. What Seneca does is it provides you with a really good baseline of knowledge. Okay, so if you're doing and completing regular Senecas, that's going to really help you. If you're new to Seneca, you can just go to the website. It's free, add your courses and start learning with Seneca as well. So what I'd recommend then in terms of that is you want about 10 hours per subject for Seneca, 10 to 20. It's best for science, geography, history. It's not as good for like maths and the mathsy subjects. So I'd be putting in time for Seneca to help me get through content. YouTube's great to help content as well. YouTube, I always find, and you'll hear me say this a lot as well, is best for cracking subjects you don't really understand and like topic areas you don't understand. It's not the best for like actually deeply learning something. And then flashcards. You need to be able to memorize. You need to be able to recall information. That's really important for the eight, right? It's, it's all easy knowing information, but you want to get more specific with science. Certain science um, questions require certain words, like specific words, and flashcards work if you remember that. So I would spend time flashcarding topics. Now, again, this would be less efficient than a nine. You may not complete all of your flashcards, but you're regularly writing flashcards quite consistently. So you're managing to get through topics and then you're doing these flashcards okay it might be a bit less organized than if you're aiming for the nines but you've got flashcards you're working on them i've done a video on flashcards i'm happy to do more as well so that's some of my best advice in content and then again for content 
the sponsor of the, today's video comes in, which is Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org is great for helping you getting the grade eight because it helps you become a better thinker and problem solver. And these are skills that are definitely needed if you want to hit the ace. So the reason I think Brilliant really works is because there are thousands of interactive and visual courses on loads and loads of different subjects as well. So this again can help you reach a much greater understanding on challenging areas. One example of a brilliant course that I wish I had, I wish I knew about brilliant when I was studying is circuits. Okay, I hate circuits. I That is the type of thing that would have held me back. I was lucky when I sat my GCSEs because we didn't actually have to learn much about circuits. But circuits, just do the brilliant course on circuits, on those difficult topics, build your way up and get that bite-sized revision in. So brilliant is super effective for that as well. And if that sounds interesting for you, and if you want to try brilliant, then click the link in the description, scan the QR code, or go to brilliant.org forward slash Henry Brown and try Brilliant for free now. They've also kindly provided 20% off a premium and subscription where you'll get all of the features unlimited on Brilliant. So make sure you use that then if you want to go for the grade eight. Okay, right, we've got two minutes left. So my next point then that I wanted to talk about and elaborate on a little bit is you need to know your weaknesses for an eight and leave your stronger subjects a little bit more. So I talked about at the start, but some students will kind of be fairly naturally at an eight or close to an eight in certain subjects. For me, for example, English language in my mock in November, I actually got an eight in it, whereas I got a three in chemistry or a six, I think, or a five in maths. And then computer science as well was another subject that I was actually quite naturally strong at. So annoyingly, because I really enjoyed those subjects, I had to kind of leave them and revise and focus on the subjects I was much weaker at. So if you are aiming for eights, again, it's that juggling act. It's trying to understand your weaknesses and leaving a bit more the subjects as well that you think you're pretty strong at. You can afford to revise them less. Again, an eight is different from that perfection across the board. So have a think about the subjects. You know, you might be at all fours now, right? And, and that this doesn't apply to you. But it is important to know your weak areas, to revise them and prioritise as well. The final point then that's absolutely critical is to practice. Now, what I'm going to do, by the way, is I always, I never get it on eight. So I'm going to try and cut it at eight. Um, I can't fully see like how long I've been recording for. But anyway, you need to practice, right? Practice is critical. It doesn't need to be loads and loads and loads, but fairly regular past papers and practice questions. Again, get them marked by a teacher. See and make sure you understand that they're good. In maths, again, it's not that like constant search for the top perfection. The nine is nice because you can aim for the top. And if you don't hit, you, there's still a gap. But an eight is like in between a nine and a seven, obviously. So it's, it's a little bit difficult in terms of that. But practice. I hope that video was helpful then. I hope that's given you a kind of rough. Uh, in short, an eight is about not making mistakes. It's about doing well consistently, but it's not like reaching high. So you're still putting in hours. You're still putting in the work. You're still learning through content. You're not making mistakes. That should get you the eight. I'll see you for the grade nine video.